I officially welcome you to the 2025 ASAO Annual Scientific Conference Surgical Landscape Exhibition, the Charazi Memorial Lecture, AGM, and a gala. I'm glad that we have the radiologist in the house. I really want to challenge them to uh, put a show about surgery. Okay, so um, just briefly to mention that 45% uh, of women with reproductive age have endometriosis. Yeah. Have endometriosis and 90% of these have deep lesions in the posterior compartment. And we've noted that 66% usually have intestinal lesions. And among these, um, we have the uh, rectal sigmoid at the biggest culprit. We also know that the transvaginal ultrasound is the gold standard in the diagnosis of endometriosis. Common symptoms, as we know, are chronic pelvic pain, dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, sometimes bowel symptoms, a bit subtle and easily missed. I also want to put a disclaimer that 50% uh, of these patients usually do not present with any symptoms. So that means you need a high index of suspicion to be able to diagnose bowel endometriosis. Um, what we, uh, the definition of bowel endometriosis basically uh, mean the presence of endometrial glands and stroma in the bowel wall. I want to take particular notes that uh, endometriosis goes for the anterior bowel wall, especially the muscularis propria, where it causes muscular hyperplasia and fibrosis. Unlike malignancies, the disease does not go for the mucosa. It never invades the mucosa and it won't cross to the posterior bowel wall. It is a disease limited to the anterior bowel wall. So what we call a bowel nodules are basically a hyperplasial fibrosis of this uh, layer of the bowel and this is responsible for the chronic pain these women go through. Um, with particular interest, as I mentioned earlier, 65 percent of these lesions are in the rectal sigmoid. However, we find that 4 percent of the patients will have endometriosis-related appendicitis. It is true that most of the patients who want to come across as surgeons with appendicitis as females have endometriosis. So it is not enough to pick out the appendix and leave the disease in the pelvis. We should take key note of that. Um, unfortunately, most of these women have moved around for eight years without a diagnosis and during this time they have several interventions. On average, they have seen like eight uh, general practitioners and have had incomplete surgeries. A picture like that is not uncommon. In your practice, where you find a woman who has had several surgeries, several complications, just because people have gone into a frozen pelvis and couldn't do much. So, we want to avoid this kind of picture by having the right and timely diagnosis. Pelvic exam is very important, especially the incorrect exam. And I want to particularly mention, and I'm glad that we have the radiology team in the house. I really want to challenge them to. Uh, put particular emphasis on the diagnosis of endometriosis because we get a lot of scans coming even from the senior uh, people and they have missed endometriosis. So the gold standard to the diagnosis of endometriosis is a simple TBS. Okay? And if a woman is a virgin, you can do a rectal ultrasound. You can be able to pick up these lesions in the bowel quite easily. The paroscopy is not the gold standard in the diagnosis of endometriosis. It should be reserved for treatment. The first surgery should be the last surgery and should be the best surgery. So we should emphasize the role of um, doing a, a very good endometrial ultrasound. But sometimes you will find a picture like that of a frozen pelvis and you do not know how to proceed. But if you did a proper ultrasound, you can see that you should be able to pick out the lesion circled there as a bowel nodule and you can plan adequately. 
Um, this is what we call a tip of an iceberg. Um, we call it a diabolo, like no 10. The kind of nod you, you see an ultrasound on the image on the left. And if you do surgery, the specimen will look like that. That is what you call a bowel nodule. It is hyperplasia of the muscularis precocy. And these are usually missed. <coughs> you cannot see them with a naked eye unless you did a proper ultrasound. What should the surgeon know? Um, ultrasound is the gold standard. We need to look at the size, the distance from the anovage, rule out stenosis of the bowel and not for collisions to plan outside the beta. This is the picture of uh, the bowel on ultrasound. And I just want you to focus on the anterior bowel wall. The muscularis mucosae is the area where the nodules go. Uh, this image basically shows you a real life ultrasound. And what you see is a bowel nodule. It is just um, the irritation of hyperplasia of that layer of the bowel. You notice that the posterior bowel wall is fair, and we measure the um, distance from the anovar, we take the length and you know the depth of the lesion, and that helps us to plan our cell. We have what we call the NZL classification. When we scan, we do the NZL because this helps us to stage the patients and helps us to plan surgery. With particular interest is the rectum, and that is what we do. A C represents the rectum, and any lesion less than one centimeter is superficial. Lesions more than three centimeters are deep, and they might require regular section. Um, there are different techniques. Um, we shall see. Um, you can decide to become conservative depending on the staging. Um, if someone has superficial lesions, you go for what you call shaving or the discoid resection of the bowel. That is just taking a small segment of the bowel where the nodule is sparing the posterior wall. Or you can decide to get radical if someone has a deep lesion or multiple lesions. Um, that's the diagnostic presentation of what I've said. This is how we do the discoid resection. Um, you get the stapler through um, the rectum and just take the section of the anterior wall of the bowel, you staple that off, and that will help to improve the result. The outcomes are much better with the discoid than the, um, the segment. But if you have a whole length uh, bowel more than six centimeters, rather than three centimeters, or large collisions, you have to do the segment of bowel resection. And these are the specimens showing you um, the involvement of the bowel. I'm about to finish. Um, here we have more collisions of the bowel. And if you have a patient like this, the lesions do not fit into the discoid, so we do a segment or section. Um, these are the statistics at our facility. We worked on um, um, a total of about 26 patients, uh, between 20. 25, 25. Among those, 59% uh, had superficial power margins and required shedding, 7% we did discoid resection, and 33%, which is a large figure, required segment of our resection. Post of outcomes were good. Um, hospital stayed between 3 and 5 days. Complication rates were low, less than 1%. Uh, we had one patient who had uh, bowel stenosis and required dilatation. The rest uh, were okay. We need to register cases of sepsis, leakage of bowel atomy. And this goes down to the technique. We use a technique called the nerve sparing technique of preparing the bowel. And we try to make sure that we preserve enough of the uh, mesorectum. With that, you get better function. Remember, endometriosis is a benign disease. It's not a malignant answer. The women are usually relatively younger, and they do well post-operatively. Um, I also want to put a disclaimer that the treatment of endometriosis is complete excision. It's not ablation, so if you decide to go for surgery, you have to be sure to complete the surgery. Um, lastly, in conclusion, I still want to give you this paper um, for your reading. 
it has a comprehensive a picture of how we diagnose endometriosis using the TBS. And for me, I think this is where um, this is a game changer. If all of us uh, would really uh, get information about the prevalence of the disease, the burden is real, and then make sure that we reduce the waiting time to diagnosis um, and get timely diagnosis, get these patients, uh, you know, uh, scored well and sent to the right centers for treatment, then we'll avoid the multiple uh, interventions that we see. I want to thank you very much. examination, trying to look out for the involvement of the ligaments, especially, you know, I mentioned that endometriosis is essentially posterior compartment disease, and that means it goes for the uh, utrosacral ligaments, the parametrium, the nerves, and the bowel. So if you put your finger in the rectum, you will actually feel, uh, uh, one, you would feel that there is no sliding sign. There is the feel of the bowel moving across with the uterus. And if the patient doesn't have a sliding sign, then it is a sign that they have a frozen pelvis. And secondly, you'll be able to palpate those nodules. They're quite obvious when you put your finger in the rectum. You'll feel them. Thank you so much.